On this episode of Brewing Around the Realm, I'm brewing up a pumpkin ale. Let's get started. Welcome back to Brewing Around the Realm. I am Dave, your amateur brewmaster. And on this episode, I am brewing up a pumpkin ale. Something different for the channel. I've never brewed a pumpkin beer before, and I thought I'd like to give it a try. Mostly inspired by the October 2005 issue of Brew Your Own Magazine. They have a Old Pumculier ale recipe, and I combined this with some research I did and an ingredient list I found over on the Craft Beer and Brewing website. I will link to that in the story post on the website, so make sure you stop over at brewingaroundtherealm.com and check that out. There are some interesting discrepancies through all of the pumpkin beers that I looked at, and I was really concerned with the Brew Your Own recipe. It did not seem to have enough spices in it. The combination of the Brew Your Own recipe along with the additions I looked at over on the Craft Beer and Brewing website helped me create something that I felt came out really good in the end. First thing I needed to do was find a neck pumpkin. I went to one of the local farmers markets around here and I found a 17 pound neck pumpkin. It was the largest one I could find. I had to chop that up into pieces and roast it in the oven at 400 degrees. Uh, I roasted it for about 45 minutes. That got the pumpkin softened up. I chopped that up in small pieces and actually didn't end up with as much pumpkin as I thought. So if you do go to brew this recipe, go out and find the largest neck pumpkin that you can find. You're going to end up with about 9 pounds out of a 17 pound pumpkin. That's a lot less than I actually anticipated. So let's get on to the brew day for this one. Start out with the recipe. I'll take you through the brewing day step by step. Let's get brewing. Today's recipe includes 9.5 pounds of Viking Pilsner malt. One pound of Crystal 120 and one pound of Torfied Wheat. In addition to that, we've got cinnamon, allspice, ginger, throw some gypsum and some baking soda into the mash water today. Molasses. I'm probably going to put some vanilla in, but not until I keg that. I'm going to put in an entire bottle, 16 ounce bottle of maple syrup, yeast nutrient. Today's hops are Hellertal Middlefru and Sterling. And the yeast for today is German ale yeast from Y yeast. That is 1007. And today's special ingredient I've got seven pounds of pumpkin that's going into the boil water today. So let's get over there and start mashing in. We're using 14.38 quarts of water today. And that water is at 168. The grain temperature is 72 degrees. And our mash temperature target today is 152. All right, I hit the number right on. This is at 152. We're gonna mash in for 60 minutes. And while this is mashing in, I'm gonna go over to the counter here and get our pumpkin ready. I have seven pounds of pumpkin in the bowl here, and there's a lot of liquid that came out of this after I took the skin off and roasted it in the oven. So I'm going to take the easy way out here. We're just going to kind of cut this up into smaller pieces. out with two gallons of 170 degree water into the mash tun and I'm going to sparge with three and a half gallons. As I get my first runnings out I'm going to keep stirring this because I'm doing a continuous sparge. 30 minutes into the boil I'm throwing in 0.6 ounces of sterling hops. There aren't too many early additions on this so 
the next one is in 45 minutes with only 15 minutes left at that time I'll put in the ward chiller and everything else 15 minutes left in goes the ward chiller at the world flock and yeast nutrient this is six teaspoons of yeast nutrient and one world flock tablet 0.6 ounces of helical middle fruit And eight ounces of molasses. Five minutes left. I'm going to put in five teaspoons of cinnamon, a teaspoon of powdered ginger, half a teaspoon of allspice, and half a teaspoon of nutmeg. I have changed the recipe up midstream here, but uh, don't worry. Full corrected recipe will be available in XML format on the website along with the video. The boil is done. I'm going to dump in this entire bottle of maple syrup here and then let it steep for 15 minutes before I turn on the wort chiller. The 15 minute steep time for the maple syrup is over. I'm going to give this a good stir and then turn on the wort chiller. I got this chilled down to wet. 80 degrees, so I'm going to pitch the yeast in. Final gravity ended up being 1060, which was very close to what I predicted. Uh, my target was 1058, so I'm very happy with that. Let me uh, pitch the yeast. This is a one liter starter, and I've been getting starts on this usually within three to four hours. So that's it for this brew session. Let's go back to the future and see how this one turned out. Between the pumpkin and the filtering of everything at the end of the boil, that was the most complicated brew day I had ever completed. Uh, it came out very well. I was very happy with that. The fermentation went very well, but I had a lot of issues straining out the pumpkin. Uh, it took me quite a bit of time to do that. After two weeks in the fermenter, I knew that the fermentation process was going to blow out most of the spice flavor, and I wanted to get some of that back in. So I made a spice tea, which I added to the beer. I had first transferred that into my bottling bucket, which previously I would have used to bottle with. Now I just needed something to mix the spice tea in and make sure I got the flavor right. I did get a little bit of footage of that, so let's take a look. I'm getting ready to keg this, and the spice flavor didn't survive all the way through the fermentation process, so I'm going to hit this with a spice tea here. I'm going to use a teaspoon of cinnamon, maybe, maybe half, maybe a little bit extra there, and then a quarter teaspoon each of ginger. nutmeg and allspice and then I will hit this with a cup of water and let it sit for you know, a couple minutes. After about two weeks in the keg, the keg was fully pressurized and everything was carbonated up nicely. I finally have my keg pressure dialed in after the first couple of kegs running through there. And this beer comes out really, really nice. Uh, I have it set so that it gets a minimal head. So I don't get a lot of head on these. But it still comes out. It smells great. And I'm really happy with this. Even though I did not fin this with gelatin, I really I was considering putting pectic enzyme into this to clear it up. It came out very clear. It's probably a little hard to see that. But it does smell like pumpkin pie, and that's exactly what I was going for. The pumpkin flavor isn't very pronounced, but the spice flavor really kind of makes it taste like pumpkin pie. I like the scent on this. It does smell like freshly baked pumpkin pie, and that's exactly what I was going for. Let's take a taste. I mean, honestly, I don't think I could have done better. 
for a first try in a fruit style beer and a pumpkin ale in general, I think this came up very well. It really pays to do all of your research. And when I started out with a good recipe from the BYO magazine and did the additional research to figure out what spice level I wanted in the beer, I really came out with something that was exactly what I was looking for. There's still plenty of time in the fall season to go out and brew yourself a pumpkin beer. You should be able to find a neck pumpkin at your local farmer's market. If you can't find a neck pumpkin, butternut squash are also in the same family as the neck pumpkins. And uh, you can use those as a substitute. And that was actually my backup plan had I not been able to find a uh, good neck pumpkin locally. Remember to like, subscribe, and share today's video. It's greatly appreciated. If you've watched more than a couple of my videos, please remember to click that subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you're alerted to all the videos I upload. Till next time, remember, I make all the brewing mistakes so you don't have to.